do that. There, there are uh, people who, who, when they speak, signs and wonders follow. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. So there is a clear uh, division. They, they were polarized. Uh, those who supported Paul and Barnabas and those who supported and those who were hostile to them. The hostile uh, crowd included the local leaders and the leaders of the Jewish community. They were prepared to resort to violence. Uh, they, there was a plot of foot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and to stone them. They had planned to mistreat them and to stone them. That they have decided to do this. Now, uh, when the apostles were alerted to this threat, they decided it was time to take the message to neighboring cities. Um, they, they, they are totally undeterred by their past experience of opposition and persecution. They continue to preach the gospel, knowing when it is appropriate to make a timely retreat is a sign of wisdom, not cowardice. We hear, we see that, uh, but they found out it and fled to uh, Lycaonian cities of Lystra and Derby uh, and to the surrounding uh, countries where they continue to preach the gospel. Sometimes it is wise to move away from places where there is a threat and when you know there is a threat in that place, sometimes God makes you stay there but then other times it is wise to get away from that particular place to a place where God takes you to. God will definitely, uh, in places where you are persecuted, in places where you are pushed out, you find that when you go to the next place, God will confirm the sign, God, uh, your word, the signs. You will see that happening. And that is what is happening here. When they went to a different place, uh, again, they, they, they preached, the Bible says, they, they continued to preach the gospel. The work of the gospel did not stop, but it was it had gone to different places. Uh, they did not, uh, they were not uh, uh, worried about the threats. Yes, in that particular place, they were worried, but uh, they moved to a different place. They did not stop preaching the gospel of God. The gospel of uh, God was never stopped. It it only went to different places. They were wise enough to move out uh, from Iconium where. A plot was in progress to stone them, to persecute them and to stone them. And when they came to know of this, they moved on. They moved on to a different place. They moved on to a place where they continued to preach, where they were free to continue to preach the gospel. Today, we also need to be wise. When there is opposition, when, when you know that this is a place where they are threatening and where, where they have decided to do something wrong against you, sometimes it is wise to move to a different place. So that is what these people, uh, Paul and Barnabas, did. they didn't stay there for a, uh, uh, they stayed there for some time and after when this uh, plan was afoot, they, they, they just went to a different place. Now we see, uh, oh, they go to a place called Lystra. Lystra was a smaller town, about 30 kilometers on the southeast of Iconium. Luke did not, does not tell us about the start of Paul's ministry here and there, but he gives a vivid de description. He does not talk about him going to the synagogue or then going to the Gentiles, but he gives a vivid description of one incident that drew much attention. Paul was preaching probably in the marketplace and when he noticed, says in this talk, they said a man who was lame. He just talks like that. He doesn't go um, like the other places where he says he goes to the synagogue and then he goes to the Gentiles. He does not talk, talk about it. He's talking about an incident which happens. It is not here where, uh, where uh, this happens. And uh, scholars think most probably it's in the marketplace. What happened?
had in, in this turn they said a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and has never walked. A man who was lame from birth and who has never walked. We saw someone like that being raised by Peter. Now a similar thing is happening here. Now it's Paul. Paul was probably preaching in the marketplace when he noticed a man who had been crippled since birth sensing that the man had faith to be healed Paul told him to stand up at once the man he said uh, uh, faith healed and called out stand up on, on your feet and at that the man jumped up and began to walk what an amazing miracle just Paul looking at the man knew, knew that he had faith to be healed he said stand up and walk to a man who has never walked in all his life. What doubts would have clouded his mind? Probably you would have thought, what is this man trying to say? I have never walked in all my life. How can this happen? Would I be able to walk? We do not know what went on in his mind, but one thing he did. He stood up. Man jumped, the Bible says the man jumped up and began to walk. Man jumped up and began to walk. What an amazing thing. A man who has never walked in all his life. From birth, he was lame and he could not walk. But Jesus, but uh, Paul said, Get up. He just said, Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. He jumped up. And he began to jump up and he began to walk. God confirms your word with signs and wonders. God confirmed Paul's word with signs. Get up and walk. And he got up. God empowers people so that people could believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a purpose that God's name will be glorified and people would look towards God, not to the person. Now there's something interesting which uh, a dramatic thing which happens here. The effect on the uh, people around them. They were all excited. They have never seen this man walk in all, all his life. They shouted that the Greek god Zeus, that's a most senior god, and Hermes, his messenger, um, had come down. They thought they were gods who had come down in human form. 11 and 12 we read, and uh, when the crowd saw that Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Now something else began to happen here. Look at this closely. Hermes and uh, um, Barbas they call Zeus and uh, Paul they call homage because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and reeds to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. Why do they want to offer sacrifices to Paul? Because Paul has asked one man to stand up and he stood up with God enabled a man to stand up. And when they saw what Paul had done, they, they wanted to, they thought that the gods have come down, that Zeus and Hermes have come down to them in the human form. They assumed they were gods. So what, what, what are they doing here? The, the, uh, well the priest, um, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and reeds to the city gates because he and the crowd, including the priest of uh, Zeus, wanted to offer sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas. They were so excited. 
They thought something great has happened, so these must be gods in human form. That was the thinking of human. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their robe clothes and rushed into the crowd shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? We too are only human. God has worked a miracle in and through Paul and Barnabas. They are saying we are just human beings, just like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from the worthless things to the living God. Turn from the worthless things to the living God is a message and that is what we are saying. And turn to the living God who made the heaven, the sea, the earth and all that is therein. saying turn to the living God, they use their opportunity to focus them on God and not on themselves. The people were focused on the people. The people were thinking that Paul and Barnabas were gods from heaven in human form. But they were saying we are just human beings and they turned the focus of them from men to God. Horrified, they tore the clothes showing the disapproval the crowds, they were not gods, they were simply human beings and they were not divine in any way. But although they, but although they were not gods, they did bring a message from the one true and living God. Tailoring, they immediately tailored the message to the crowd of Gentile polities. Paul implored them to turn from the worship of many gods and he says those worthless things and turn to the true and living God. This God, the creator of heaven, the earth and all that is in them. He allowed people to go in their own paths. But now, Paul implored, this is the creator of heaven and earth who allowed people to go their own way in the past, but has also provided ample evidence of, the, of his reality and his providential care. In 1417 we read, He provides you plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. He has shown kindness by giving the rain from the heavens and crops in the seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with those words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Paul and Barnabas, they were talking about a God. They did not, they were very clear that they were not divine, they were not gods, they were human beings, just like any one of them. And they turn, they, they are trying to turn the thoughts to God who made the heavens and the earth and provided for them. They are turning, they, they want to divert their attention to the creator, they want to point these people to the living God, the creator of the heaven, the earth and all that is therein. They are not wanting to take credit for themselves. Sometimes, when we do ministry, when people begin to praise or say something, it is easy for us to take the credit for ourselves. If you have done so, go back to God and say, I'm sorry, Lord, all credit belongs to you. You are worthy. You are worthy of everything, Lord. I am worthy of nothing. But you made it possible because you empowered me. You Fill me. You use me. May those be your words. Even as you minister, my friend, if you are a minister of God and you are watching, be careful not to take the credit and honor to yourselves. It is God and God alone who deserves all glory and honor. And not the person. We are just people who bring the word of God. We are used by God. 
but the glory and honor should always be to God. And always make sure when people are praising you to turn their attention to God, the creator of the heaven and earth, and not to yourself. We need to be very careful about this. It is very easy for us to look at ourselves and say, okay, I have done something. No. It's all by His grace. It is all what God is doing. And even with all this, it was difficult for them to keep them from sacrificing to them. It looks like an emotional upheaval because they saw the lame man from birth walk. Because in verse 19 it says, Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. One side there is praise. The same people, when they are convinced, some Jews came down and won the crowd over. They won the crowd. They said the things against Paul and the Barnabas and they were stoned and Paul was stoned. They singled out Paul and he was stoned. They stoned Paul and dragged him out thinking he was dead. Probably just like Stephen, he also must have been stoned. People would have stoned him. And the people also thought he was dead. But the people, uh, but the disciples had gathered around him. He got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Darwin. What, the, what a, a way this is. He is preaching the gospel. And then he says, man stand up. The man gets up. They think he is God. And everybody is excited. Everybody wants to praise him. Everybody wants to uh, give, uh, give him, a, make a sacrifice to him. But soon they turn away, the drop turns away, and they begin to stone. You need to be careful, honest, just like Paul and Barth and Barnabas, to turn the attention of people from you to God. The second thing, which is a takeaway, is don't think always people will be praising the same people who praise you will be will become the same people who's probably stoning you to death also. Probably they have received some miracles through your ministry. But probably today they are stoning you, my friend. The same thing happened to Paul. Keep that in mind. People who are with you, who are very excited when something happens, can they even turn against you. What happens to Paul and Barnabas? They stoned Paul and they left him because they thought he was dead. People might praise you. And the next moment, they might even stone you. So as a minister, when you minister, be careful. Be aware that you will be stoned, that you will, people will persecute you, that people will speak against you. These things will happen. Why? Because it has happened to even Paul. The same people who praised him the next moment. The same thing we see in the life of Jesus. A week before they all came behind him, the next, uh, you know, the next week they were all against him. The, many of them who were against him. So we need to be watchful. Don't get carried away when people praise you for what, is, what, what God is doing in and through you. Don't be carried away because there will be a time when the same people might come and say things against you. People who have benefited from your ministry might come and say things against you. So please watch it. Turn their attention to God like Paul and Barnabas did. When the people were the after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back to the city. And the next day they left for Derby. They preached the gospel in the city and won a large 
Where did they go? They went to a place called Derby. Um, Derby was 88 kilometers from from where they uh, from Alista, and uh, they. They were welcome and the ministry were blessed and they won a large number of disciples. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they turned to Lystra. They're coming back to Lystra. It's a return journey. Paul has gone to the end and now he's coming back. He's coming back to uh, Lystra and then uh, Lystra, Iconium and Antioch. Strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true in the faith. Who are these disciples? Were they people who responded to Paul's call or to abandon worthless things to the living God? If so, did they have to renounce the religion into which they were born? Did Paul anticipate that they would be persecuted for doing so? Perhaps that was why Paul and Barnabas reminded them that hardship was inevitable for the kingdom, in entering the kingdom of God. In parts of South Asia, renouncing the religion into which one is born is a serious matter with serious consequences. Those who do so often face harassment and physical persecution to get them to reconvert. If they refuse to do this, they may be excommunicated by the family and the community. They may be accused of having got shame to the entire family, damaging its reputation in the community, and they will be forced to leave homes. Some may find that the new faith mean, meaning that they lose their eligibility and social and governmental privileges to which people of other faiths are unconditionally entitled. It is much easier to live by compromises than to live by convictions. Paul's words, we must go through hardships to enter the kingdom of heaven rings through in our ears. But we must not be focused on this, that we lose sight of the rest of the message. And remain true to the faith. Paul and Barnabas also organized the disciples into a proper body with leaders, appointing leaders in each churches. He went on strengthening them and uh, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord. He avoided leaders. Paul may have felt it was necessary to help the new believers stay faithful in their hostile environment. From Lystra, Paul and Barnabas traveled back to the city of Perga. After preaching the word there, they proceeded to the nearest port of Atalia. And they sailed back to Antioch, where they have been committed to the grace of God for the work they are now completed. And arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God has done for them and how He opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. It's how we see. God has worked in the life of all. Yes, he went to different places. He was persecuted and left to be dead. Sometimes they, people praise him to be gods and the next moment they stone him to be dead. The life of a person who shares the word of God, who two drops and dogs, it is a difficult path they have to go through. The same people who praise you would be the same people who throw the stones. But be encouraged that God is with you. God will perform signs and wonders in and through you. And always turn their attention to God so that God's name will be glorified. Just like Paul and God was. And do not be afraid of people. Look to the living God. Turn people to the living God, to the attention of the living God and give him all the glory so that God's name will be glorified in our lives. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer?
Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the lives of Paul and Barnabas. Lord, we see your master, how you perform miracles through them. And how at one time people praised them to be gods and at the same time uh, they stoned them, they stoned Paul to, and left him to be dead or master. Lord, I pray for people who are preaching your word, who are sharing your word, who are going through troubles, trials, persecution. The same people who have benefited from them are stoning them or master. Lord, I pray that you will have mercy on them, strengthen them, encourage them. And Lord, I pray that they will always point the people to you and not to themselves. Through everything, let your name be glorified in their lives. I pray for people who are sick. By your strength, let them be healed in the name of Jesus. Set them free, Lord. Lord, I pray that every sickness will be gone in the name of Jesus. Heal them. And Lord, I pray that your name will be glorified in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Till we meet again next week. Thank you.